pills for any uh, gum or things like that, so the article has a clear path. Uh, my name is Bruce Stasna, and I am the course master for San Diego Opera, and I'm the music administrator, and I'm one of the conductors on the detour series. So my first question to all of you is, how do we do tonight? running of the show? Yes. Okay, what do I do? Well, I'm backstage, and um, if you see, if you hear in Act 1, there's an offstage trumpet. I conduct the offstage trumpet. Um, during the fight scene with the ladies, I'm actually, like, this close from the stage, and I'm also conducting from the monitor, because it's a really tricky, tricky scene. So I'm conducting, and very sometimes I'll snap my fingers just to give them an oral cue as well. In Act 2, there's the trumpet retreat with the two trumpets off stage. I conduct them. Um, there's a bunch of other cues um, when, the, when the men come on uh, off stage right with the, the Viva Escamillo before they come on. I conduct that off stage. And then in Act 3, I just listen and I stare at people. And then <laughs> Act 4, we're, we're in the bull ring after everybody ends the off stage. I'm, uh, I'm there conducting the off stage banda and the chorus for all that stuff. So I'm busy enough. I'm busy enough. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Yes, sir. I, I see here in the program that you have a fight director. A fight it's choreographer, it's, yes. It's, it's one thing to do fights in the movie, but in the, in the stage, I, I assume, I imagine it's very hard. Yes, exactly. But dangerous, too. Well, the, the, that's, the, that's it. That's exactly the thing. Um, whenever you choreograph fights on stage, as opposed to in, in, in the film industry, where the, the camera angle can, can conceal a lot, um, what we rely on is somebody who is, is very uh, experienced in physicality and how to teach the performers how to punch, how to take a punch or simulate take effect. But, um, but the actual uh, the, the discussion about, you know, uh, we're not going to get too gruesome about it, but when you, when you insert a knife into somebody's spleen and then the actual what happens physically the physical reaction as, as the blade penetrates. There, there was a very serious series of discussions so that everybody was well versed on how that was all gonna work, so how the acting could seem realistic, but also absolutely safety. Whenever you're doing anything like that on stage, it's paramount to make sure that it is effective, authentic, but highly safe. So, we actually do fight calls throughout the show. At the top of the show, I, I rehearse the chorus, then they go upstairs, they do a fight call with the assistant stage director, and then before act three and four, where they're changing the set, they do all the fight calls for Jose and, and Escamillo with the knives, right? The, the coup de navaja, exactly. So yeah, it's very involved. The conductor, the conductor, Maestro Eva Bell. <laughs> It doesn't even start with my evening, it starts from the day, from the moment I wake up in the morning to the entire day. This role for me, sometimes sung by baritone, it sits very high in my voice, so I practice, I warm up throughout the entire day. Uh, I'm in the makeup chair at 7 o'clock when the curtain opens. Uh, I get all my makeup done, all the wig, uh, during the first act, and then I go on to sing the, the big tune, the big aria. Uh, and I really had to keep my voice up the entire time, which means every time I walk off stage, I can't just sit down and relax. I go back, I'm sitting there with that little piano on my phone, I'm constantly warming up. I, I, we all have our routine. Every singer will tell you they have their own routine, their own things that they have to do to prepare. Uh, but I really have to be in my dressing room with the water, with my little piano, with warming up all the time. Dog and I also happen to notice in the house now, Ginger Costa Jackson. Yeah. Is the yeah. Without further ado, I'm actually going to ask the entire cast if you would take five big steps. 
steps this way so we can give everybody some spray. Okay, everybody's gonna get a little bit of spray tonight. And is it true? Is it true? Do we have another cast member, Sarah Tucker? Yes. Okay. Ginger, your hair is real, and as Camille, your hair, you are a wig. <laughs> <laughs> I came in the, the, the first day for the uh, wig fitting, and they threw me a couple on me, and I'm we talked to the director, and the first piano tech was the first time they'd actually done the dye and everything for the hair. And they put it on me, and it's they're just, everybody's always so surprised. That, you know, I always walk out the opera house, and no one ever says anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I have to I have to tell Ginger, and I've told her before. She is the best castanet player I've ever had. <laughs> In fact, I, uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the, the mm. Carmen cannot play the castanet or cannot coordinate with her singing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it takes a lot of, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's, it's actually very difficult and not easy. And, and, um, and, and she does it with such ease and such precision in the rhythm that I told her even that some percussion players who play instead of the, the Carmen play it not as well as she plays it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, there was a question over here, sir. I enjoyed the discussion about the motivation behind everything. Um, you see the same thing when you go to plays. How is it different when you sing it? Versus speaking. Versus, yes, speaking a play and singing a play. A, a certain level of your subtext will be dictated to you, given mm -hmm. the music, of mm -hmm. course. So certain, I mean, you can do things with that. You can play, try to play against it to add more levels of subtext. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, I think I want to open up the discussion and take some questions from the audience now for our cast. So if you have questions, now's your opportunity to talk to our wonderful Carmen cast. Yes? Sure. Um, so this is my, I think my fifth time seeing Carmen. I saw the tragedy of Carmen a couple of years ago when it was here. And every time it gets to the ending, it always freaks me out because I feel like that's the dark fantasy of your modern day school shooter or incel. Or it's just a very kind of anti-feminist message. Um, do you ever think about what could have possibly happened to save these two or what lesson could be taken from this? Best in violence counseling. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of therapy. That's that's, that's certainly therapy. one 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 possible. If they have health care, if they have health care, they can afford therapy. Very good point. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think these are two people who love each other in the infatuation sense of the word. Um, stand up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I've only been singing enough. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that neither of them really knows how to love each other because love is um, selfless and kind. And, um, but they are infatuated with each other and they, he can't accept that I've moved on. And, uh, and I have this odd feeling about destiny that I'm brave and I'm going to, I can do anything and I'm going to talk to him. Which isn't really smart. Like, I really just should have gone into the bullfight. <laughs> but he's been stalking me for a while, so it's like I wanted to confront him. Because maybe in my head, I think, if I just tell him, listen, we're done. Do you, do you hear me? We're done. Like, it's over. I'm so sorry. She does this all the time. <laughs> And when we portray it, it's not an anti-feminism. It's we all walking away don't think, that was Jose, good job. Yeah. She yeah. deserved it. Wait, it, they don't? No. They don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you walk away with the truth of it, which is that was not okay. And it is okay for women to stand up for themselves and say no. And she tells him no, and she dies for it. But she'd rather live free mm -hmm. than live a slave, die free than live a slave. Exactly. I think there's also a cautionary tale in if you watch Don Jose's trajectory of a violent man, I know, watch it. 
um, of a violent man, he descends to nothing. He doesn't have anything when it's done. He's going to die. If, especially if you read the, if you read the book, um, it gets more to his inability to control his anger, which is everything about it. He has no ability to deal with these emotions in a healthy way. He's like case, like a case example of a, 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 a toxic mas masculinity because he is, he's laughed out, so he gets angry and lashes out. And you watch, he starts it off, he kills a guy before the show even starts. I'm not even kidding, that happens in the dialogue, it's all there. And then he has to go into the military and he just continues to fall, because he's Don Jose for a reason. He's a non-landed, titled and privileged nobility, a Hidalgo, which is a special Basque sort of thing. So he goes from having essentially it all, outside of land, to nothing because he cannot, he was not raised to be able to express his emotions correctly. And I think that's something that you can take as a cautionary idea from it, rather than, oh, that guy was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Question in the back, ma'am. This is very deep. For Tasha and Ginger, is it easier to sing barefoot or in heels? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what I'm singing. <laughs> I like singing barefoot, but today I had to sing with one shoe on, so. <laughs> Jackson, right here. <laughs> I just want to give a comment to my paisana. I have seen many comments, but you are the best. <laughs> oh! So, so I'll, I'll take this if you guys don't mind, because what we did on uh, day one of school is music with Maestro. So Maestro Eve gets uh, uh, six hours of musical rehearsals with the cast, and then he actually meets with the chorus in the evening. So it makes for a very long day, because then he gets a, an additional three hours with the chorus, who has been who have been prepared in advance by as part of my job. And then day two, we start staging with the stage director, and literally Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so a five-day week of staging, day off. We come back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then we leave the rehearsal space um, for Thursday evening is our first night in the theater. For, so for all intents and purposes, by Wednesday night, we're done, right? <laughs> like, yes, sir. I wonder how each of you nourishes yourself on, on the day of the performance. It's very interesting. Let's, let's take it down uh, yeah, yeah, and then hear yeah. from Sarah. We haven't heard from Sarah yet. I'm only here because I came out of my dressing room and everyone was gone. <laughs> <laughs> She's here because she loves you all. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I try to make myself rest the day of, which took me a long time to learn. And that's almost more important than when I eat the fuel. Uh, because I have a tendency to want to wake up early and go and then Showtime comes around and my body says, oh, well, now it's time to relax and you can't. So, like today, I, I made myself stay in the apartment until the late afternoon and then I had, you know, some protein and a salad and tried to be good and tomorrow I'll have pizza. <laughs> what about you, Patrick? What's your day like? Uh, well, personally, uh, as you can tell, I'm a big guy. I like to eat. And, uh, <laughs> I, I've fallen in love with a place here in town called Tender Green. So I can go to the so I can go there and have a salad and some chicken and some steak and, and just get myself uh, not not over. I don't. I try not to overeat, but just enough because being stabbed is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so my question: I always like to know what's next for you. What's next? All right, let's go down the line, Sarah. What's next? Uh, right after this, I go to Montana to do Tatiana and Regina Reagan, my favorite role. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Patrick? For me, uh, Handel's Messiah, Box uh, B minor mass, and then I'll have the uh, pleasure to return to Los Angeles Opera in August for rehearsals for their opening of La Boheme. Ooh. Ooh. That's so good. <laughs> Robert? Uh, next, I head to the Kennedy Center to do uh, Tosca with Washington National. Oh. Okay. Ginger. After Sunday matinee, I take a midnight flight and have a 10 a.m. musical for Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> I go 
to the Spoleto Festival and do Zolome. I'll be singing the High Priestess in Aida with Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, record of Yeah, cool. I'm going to Barcelona on uh, Monday. I fly to, uh, to Barcelona, to the Liceo in Barcelona to do the Pearl Fishers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to release our artists, but before I say. Thank you all for coming to our talk.